Welcome to a short video which explains what Virtual Vault is from an end user perspective. This is the third video in this series. We will cover several topics in this video, including what Virtual Vault is for you as an end user and some of the operations that you can perform. Let's dig into that in some more detail now, starting with what Virtual Vault is. The most important things about Virtual Vault are that it shows you a visual representation of the structure of your archive. This includes the folder structure and the items within each folder. It is visible as a node in Outlook, just like your mailbox, PSTs, personal archive, and so on. Another critical feature is that, depending on the server-side configuration, the virtual vault can be enabled so that it is writable as well as readable. The real benefit of having virtual vault is that you can find data that's been archived and organize it in a way that suits you. If allowed by an administrator, you can delete data from folders or whole folders themselves, and you can create new folders. You can rearrange data within your archive by dragging and dropping it into a new place. Also, a benefit that may have been overlooked is that you can drag and drop data into Virtual Vault from a mailbox or PST. The changes that you make to the Virtual Vault are all done locally on your PC. At predetermined times or when you initiate the operation manually, those changes are synchronized to the Enterprise Vault server. At that same time, newly archived data is also copied down to Virtual Vault if need be. This happens transparently to you. One of the things we've just mentioned is that you can drag and drop data from the mailbox or PST to a folder within Virtual Vault. At this point, it's only in the Virtual Vault files. It won't be in the source, PST or mailbox any longer and it won't really be in your archive. If you do this operation, I'd recommend doing a manual synchronization of the virtual vault and vault cache files and checking that it completed successfully. If there are issues here, there is a potential for some of the data to be lost. So let's take a look at virtual vault and what we can do with it. Here we see my Outlook 2010 workstation with a test user set up and Virtual Vault is shown here at the bottom of the folder list. If I expand Virtual Vault, you can see that there is a similar structure as there is in my mailbox. Inside Virtual Vault, I can drag and drop things around like this. I can also create a new folder and add items to it from my mailbox, like we see here. Now, all of this, as I mentioned, will get synchronized from time to time in the background but I can also manually do it here, like this. On this screen, which shows the synchronization information, you can see that there are a number of items that need to be sent up to the EV server, and there might be items that need to come down as well. Those will show soon. After a few minutes, you can see that the window updates to show progress and completes. You can also start the synchronization here and then just close this window and it will carry on in the background. In summary, we can see that in many ways Virtual Vault replaces Archive Explorer and gives a fully integrated experience. Your archive appears alongside your regular mailbox. It then makes it very easy to reorganize archive data and to add new data ahead of the archiving schedule if you wish to. Data synchronization is done automatically, but it can also be manually initiated. One thing worth remembering is that Virtual Vault, like Vault Cache, is only available to Outlook users with the Enterprise Vault Outlook add-in installed. I hope that this overview of Virtual Vault is helpful to you. Thanks for your time. Goodbye.